Hello everyone. This video is part of a series where we are developing a microservices based social media application. And our main goal is to learn the microservices pattern. We are also interested in the main challenges and some of the solutions and best practices of microservices. So here is a brief overview of our current tasks and our plan for the near future. And of course there is more than this, but here for the sake of brevity, I have added just the next few tasks we will be working on. This second diagram also has a more detailed breakdown of each task. If you want to check this, you can stop the video for, for a bit and check it by yourself. We also have a Jira board, which we use to track the progress of the, the user stories we are working on, as well as their subtasks. So you may see me coming back to the backlog, doing a little bit of planning once in a while, once we get completed that with the tasks that we added for or that we selected for development. In the previous video, we have finished implementing the node mailer SMTP server. So the node mailer SMTP server now allows us to send emails to users. And here in this case, we are using the API public and the API key private to send emails to our local machine. We will worry about production a little bit later on, but it will not be anything. So it's going to be as simple as instead of loading the .dev environment file, loading the .production environment file, or in a production environment in the cloud, for example, loading the information from the environment variables configured in the cloud or in Kubernetes. But what I wanted to do now was to actually enable us to send emails to our local, so to our local machine, once a user signs up in our application. Since we will need this, so I opened up again here the sign up route. It's been a while since the last time we were here. So what we want to do here, we actually want to simply get the instance of the email sender, right? So this pretty much the same as we did with um, previously, for example, in the index.ts file where we where we activate and set the email API. Now here we want to get the instance of the email sender. And then we can simply say email sender dot send sign up verification email. And the to email is going to be our new user dot email, right? So oops, without the uh, semicolon. So this is going to change. I can already tell you this is going to go away from here, right? This whole thing here is going to go away once we implement our notification service. But for the moment, we will leave this here. So in the future, what's going to happen is we will raise this new event. This new event is going to be sent to our streaming platform. This streaming platform is going to notify or is going to post this event in a specific channel and the email sender or the notification service is going to be listening to, to that channel. And so when they will be like, okay, oh, there is a new event user signed up. I know I should send an email, like send a sign up verification email to that user. So then he will look at the user signed up um, object, which is returned or which will be sent together with the event and it will get the email from that user signed up. So here we could also try to simulate this a little bit serialize rest dot email if we want to, but for the purposes of this video and of the next couple of videos, it is enough for us to leave this email information coming from the new user, right? So the email sender is going to be executed only if uh, an error is not raised from our user creation, meaning if we try to create an email that is already saved in a database, then this email should not be sent, right? So one thing that we could do, we could try to update our unit tests. Let's have a look here at the signup.test.ts. And here we don't have any tests regarding the, the sending of the sign uh, of, of the sign up verification email, right? So before we start our server, maybe we can um, update the tests or now let's, mm, let's update the tests in the next video. I'm just thinking that here I want to make this quite clean 
and keep it contained in one video and in the next video we will write additional tests to make sure that everything is working as expected. So here I am violating a little bit our principle of test driven development and I will write a bit of functionality because I also want to show you how to connect to a local instance of MongoDB. Right, so now we are sending our email here and I'll send this file. That's all the changes that we need to do here. And now I will come back to my index file and here I would like to, I would like to connect to a, to an instance of MongoDB. So at some point, because I need to create my user, I need to have a connection to MongoDB. If I don't have a connection to MongoDB, the user.create is going to fail because there is no connection, right? So it's not a flaw in our logic, it's a flaw in our setup. But because I don't really want to cut up corners here, I don't want to set up a, a local MongoDB and then um, have to worry about deleting that afterwards, we will take the same approach as we, we did with the tests. So we'll create a memory server for MongoDB. Well, I'll just copy this code and I will paste this in our index.ts file. So after I um, after my app is, is listening, then I can, or here, <coughs> I could create the, the MongoDB, so the new Mongo server, and then within my app.listen, I'll say, okay, get that Mongo server URI and connect to the database, right? So here I'll just paste this little bit up here. And then once I have the connection to the database and the Mongo is, is connected, then I will simply log that I'm listening on port 3000. Now, this is going to change again in the future. Italian is going to change, but here it, that's, this is a very quick way of setting up an instance of Mongo. This is in memory, which means that if you stop the server, then the data is going to be erased. But here, this allows you at least to start the server up and open Postman to try to do a few requests, right? So to see how this works with actually sending requests over Postman. So now we have the basic setup. Let's start our server. Right, npm run start dev. Okay, everything seems to be working. Now let's come to Postman. I'll create a new request and I will send a request to localhost port 3000 and our URL is API of sign up right like so if i send a get request mm, that's going to return an error because we don't have the get method if i send a post request this mm, is going to return and then as you can see here this is how we are formatting our errors and i find this quite quite nice right so as you can see it's already very um well formatted and this format is going to be consistent in all our applications, meaning that our clients can worry only about, they don't need to worry about inspecting the errors that are returned. They will already have a shape of these errors. So this will be provided by our common package, right? So the, the, the type of the error that is returned. And here you see a nice status code of 422. Now, if I come to the body, and I create a raw body and I will pass here the JSON and I'll say email. And it's going to be test at test.com and password. And that's going to be our valid one, two, three password. And then I send this request. Then you will see that the user was successfully created, right? Status of 201 created. I get the ID and I get the email back. And here, if I send this again, I should have an error because the email is already in the database. So now it's very nice to see how our unit tests actually already checked and defined all the behavior that we need or that we needed for our route and that everything is working as expected because our tests were already working as expected. Right? So there will be no surprises here except for the email sending. So if I come here, you see that there is an error, right? And this error here in my console is because the local server for our SMTP email is not active. 
right? So I didn't I didn't open Node Mailer and uh, the server is not active. So let's open Node Mailer. <coughs> I'll connect here. I think I will clean this if it's possible. Flash all messages. Okay. Fine, so now I will restart my server. I didn't have to restart my server, but I just want to show you that because I restarted my server, that in-memory database was deleted, and now we can create the same user again, right? So now the server is running. Let's send this again, and now we have an ID and an email, and if I come back to Node Mailer, then there should be my first email here. Ah, of course, I forgot to um, start the server. <laughs> so let's come here and start the server again. And let's restart this, this, um, the process here. So now it's running. If I come here and I send the email again, then as you can see, we should have our first email. Exactly. So here is our first email and we can now test that we are sending emails whenever we are setting up the user or whenever the user is signing up to our application. Good. In the next video, we will then come back to this and we will adjust the tests for the sign-up route. I'm sorry for bypassing the test-driven uh, development approach here, but in the next video, for sure, we will come back and we will add the relevant tests. If you don't want to miss out on the videos that are published, then make sure to subscribe to the channel. I try to publish videos every day. so you will get a notification, a small notification every time I publish a new video. So thank you for your time and see you in the next video. Bye bye.